Hello and welcome to Incredible Inverts and Other Animals with me, Phil. Now if it's your first time joining me for one of these videos, please do go ahead and check out my previous ones. Also please do click that subscribe button and hit that bell for notifications of when I next upload future videos. Now quick update for you guys, when this video uh, gets uh, uploaded or released on Sunday, that following week from Monday, I'll actually be taking part in the first online conference of the Terrestrial Invertebrate Working Group which for those who don't know that's actually a working group as part of BIASA which is the British and Irish Associations of Zoos and Aquaria and um, so within the UK and having this particular group obviously focuses on invertebrates and it focuses on invertebrate husbandry and conservation as well now normally once a year we have an annual three day conference at a, a zoo chosen within the UK where we all meet up and discuss all things husbandry, conservation and research and veterinary as well. But of course this year 2020 we had to cancel our conference so it was actually meant to go down to Paynton Zoo for that um, but unfortunately for obvious reasons it had to be cancelled but the, uh, the steering committee of Twig has decided to try and do an online conference so I'll be taking part in that which I'm very excited about and I'll be doing a tour for that of my invertebrate facility at the zoo I work at. So, so the terrestrial invertebrate working group is a whole mix of keepers from various UK zoos. I'm a member that and have been for a few years now. Um, they've also got Paynton Zoo, Chester Zoo, London Zoo many others as well so it's not just the smaller zoos but the bigger zoos as well and I've been pretty much any zoo in the UK that is a member of Biaza and has an invertebrate collection is a part of that um, so it's a great honour to actually be asked to, uh, to do a tour of my facilities um, as well as a great number of uh, talks going to be going on throughout the week um, some at various colleges that are part of Biaza as well as veterinary um, research as well, some case studies in phasmids uh, in terms of veterinary care, so I'm really interested in that. But another that, today we're going to be having a look at a species of millipede, in particular the olive millipede from Africa. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so here we have the olive millipede, or Telendinopus auti. Now that's the important name to remember is the scientific name. These guys can go by a number of various common names including skeleton leg or zebra leg and there's a number of other species of millipede that go by those names as well as the name olive millipede. So with any invertebrate it's always important to remember the scientific name. That's the one that matters. Now this species of millipede is a fantastic species comes from Western Africa, mainly to uh, Ghana and Togo. And it comes from the dry savanna areas there, but they do go through rainy periods and they do need some humidity as a lot of millipedes do. But it's important for these guys to actually give them some seasonal variation. So they do need some drier periods as well as, well as some wetter periods. So in the wild they go through a rainy season. I'll try and give that them here in captivity as well. Now this species I've been keeping now for a number of years and I've also been breeding them. These are actually one of the easiest species in my opinion to keep and breed and can be done very successfully in captivity. And as I said, I've been doing that now for a number of years of breeding these. I've got these both in my own private collection and I've introduced them uh, to the zoo that I work at as well as a fantastic alternative to the, sort of the giant African um, it'd be that we're more familiar with that doesn't necessarily breed all that well in captivity or takes a lot longer to breed. These guys are much quicker. Now this is an adult millipede that we're looking at here so they're not a huge species they are fairly slender but they do get up to around 19-20 centimeters in length so they get a decent sort of size but not as big as some of the uh, large species that you get from Africa. So, now these guys they do need a, a nice deep substrate, as do pretty much all millipedes. That's made up of leaf litter, uh, various stages of decay with rotten wood and twigs and various things in there like that for them to eat, which is part of their diet. And they also need some branches and twigs and stuff to climb up on as well. And even better is if they're covered in lichen, they'll eat the lichens off those twigs as well, which again is a great part of their diet. But these guys are fairly sort of generalists when it comes to, uh, to their diet, so as you can see, 
Here they've got some carrot, they've got some apple as well. Some of the peas will not touch sort of supplementary feeds. These guys will. And they also do uh, quite like a bit of extra protein. Now we can give them extra protein in the form of mushrooms, dog biscuits, fish flakes, and even occasional pinky mice. And they will go absolutely mental for for mice, um, but I don't get them very often. It does become a bit messy and a bit smelly at times. So sometimes it's best to stick with, uh, with the mushrooms or the dog biscuits for them. Sometimes dog biscuits or fish like just wants to be dampened down a little bit for them just to make it easier for them to eat. But the important thing is to remember to always have plenty of wood and leaves and stuff in there for them to eat as well. They are detritivores, so they'll break all that down. They'll create a compost and that is great for plants. Now here we've just got a close-up test now, a very cheap macro clip-on lens for my phone. So it's not too bad actually, you get quite a decent image of them, you can see all the segments there uh, within the millipede. And coloration these guys can vary from brown right up to olive green. And here you can see legs as well, and the legs are just beautiful. And here you can really see why some people call them the zebra leg or skeleton leg with the banding of the white and the black. And this can act as warning coloration. So white on black or black and white as well as bright colours are warning colorations. And they have these warning colorations just to warn of their defensive secretions that they have. So they secrete iodine, which can stain our skin. So it smells a bit and doesn't taste very nice. So it's generally quite a good way of warning a predator. Now here's some of my captive bred youngsters. Um, I actually keep these in a separate enclosure. Uh, to those. They can be reared with the adults absolutely fine. So I separate a few out just to raise them up and get them that bit bigger they grow fairly quickly uh, these guys are now around about five six months old so, now normally i do uh, sell these on uh, but this year 2020 there hasn't really been any shows apart from the one in january so i'm just going to carry on growing these up and then hopefully next year i can make these guys available but i do breed these every year um really successfully as you can see and in this sub i've actually probably got over, over 100 uh, little individuals I find these guys are fairly active and actually spend a lot of time on the surface and in branches and twigs. So they make great display millipedes. Some millipedes spend all their time under the substrate and you never see them again. You've just got a tub of pet dirt. These guys are active uh, mainly at night but you will see them out during the day and you will see them about every now and then. So they make great additions. And if you put plenty of branches you'll get little groups of youngsters like I have here. Just gathering around up the top. They'll also sort of clump together in corners and underneath food as well. And in this tank at work, I've probably got around sort of two to five hundred babies in here. And you can also keep these community with other species. So you can keep various isopods with these guys. Also beetles, uh, so free beetles like your pack noders. And also cockroaches as well, and they do absolutely fine. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that look at the olive millipede. Hope you agree with me, fantastic species, yet another fantastic species of invertebrate. And this particular species, if you don't keep millipedes, or you do, and you're looking for another species of millipede, or your first species of millipede to keep, I highly recommend this particular species. They are, in my opinion, one of the easier species of millipede to keep, as well as an easier one to breed. So you can keep going with them. Um, now I've first got this species kind of accidentally and um, my mum bought me one individual uh, a few years ago I decided to get some more and then they bred them and they actually quickly became one of my favourite species of millipede to keep purely because they are they are one of the easier species I've found to keep and a very easy species to breed which meant that I could carry on going with the uh, colonies of them so that's a win-win in my opinion you know completely captive bred, not taking any from the wild, and so, so to me that's the perfect bit of feed. So hopefully you enjoyed this video, if you did please give it a thumbs up, please again if you haven't yet please do hit that subscribe button and that notification bell uh, for when I next upload another video, and please do leave some comments down below. Do you keep midipedes? If you do, what species do you keep? Do you not keep millipedes but are thinking about getting some? What species are you looking for perhaps to add to your collection or perhaps as your first millipede? I highly recommend the olives. Also, do you have any questions about millipedes or anything else 
at all. Do ask me, if I don't know, I'll hopefully know someone who does and can point you in the right direction. Well, on that, until next Sunday when I upload another video, that one will probably be uh, hopefully uh, pretty uh, excited from after the virtual conference of the Terrestrial Invertebrate Working Group. But until next Sunday, I'll see you later. Goodbye.